How to remove and replace a 2002 Sentra B1S2 aux sensor. That's bank one sensor two. The check engine light's on and my scanner is reading a P0138. I did a uh, scan with um, my scanner of uh, live data, freeze frame scan, and um, bank one sensor two, that's B1S2, it was constantly at 300 millivolts, and um, you'll see the short term fuel trim underneath, it says not available, and if you look at um, bank two sensor two, it says constantly 90%, and the fuel trim shouldn't be ever 20%, and the reason why is that um, the the ECM or PCM, whatever you refer to it as, doesn't use the um, the sensor twos, either one of them, bank one or bank two, the sensor twos for um, any kind of determination for, for fuel trims. It just uses uh, bank one, sensor one, and bank two, sensor, uh, sensor uh, one for uh, determining the fuel short-term fuel trims. So this is under a hood uh, view of my uh, GXE and up in the top left corner the firewall is where the uh, car computer is. And uh, what I did is I there's two fixing bolts. You just take those out and you can pull the, um, it's kind of like pulling a radio out of a, out of a dash in a way. This is a view of um, bank one sensor two and it's the one on the left and it's really I don't know if that's road damage or the guy that had before me. He said something about the check engine light intermittently coming on, but he said he fixed it. And um, I don't know if that's from him trying to get get the the oxygen sensor out. I mean, the other one looks like it's got a kind of um, you know it's kind of almost rounded off some of the the corners on the um, the the bolt surface. I don't know, but anyway, I. Took a while, I got it out. So I'm going to show you how to remove the um, the car computer, and the reason why is uh, first I want to check sh to make sure that the the wiring there's not an open or it's shorted to ground or shorted to power. Make sure that you know both the um, the wires that go from the the aux sensor and to the aux sensor power and ground, especially the ground, make sure the ground's uh, working correctly. So you have to undo the bracket, take the two bolts out that go on the um, the um, the wheel well, the top of the wheel well on the inside of the trunk. Uh, they, they hold the um, the wiring harness and then in the, on the left you can see there's like a um, air vent that goes to the uh, the bottom of the CPU. You got to disconnect that I think it comes from the fan or inside the car, and it just uh, keeps the um, the uh, CPU cool. It, optional, you can uh, disconnect the bottom um, the bottom bracket for the uh, wiring harness where the arrow is pointing. This is another picture of the uh, air duct that goes to the bottom of the, uh, the CPU or the ECM or PCM, whatever, which whichever term you refer to it as. Then you just sort of slide the brain box out. I had trouble getting the top off. There's two um, weather sealed. There's a bottom that the CPU or ECM, PCM is uh, fastened to, and then the top comes off. And what happened was, I don't know if it's because it's been in there for a long time or what, but the bolts kind of seized a little bit and the threads or, you know, the grommets are set in the plastic and they just spun right in the plastic. So. You know, it, it, um, I think I just pulled them out completely out. So, um, there was, I think two, two of the, I think there's five, like four or five bolts and three of the bolts were still good. And two of them, you know, um, they were, they were stripped out and I put a, a bolt through with a nut on the end that seemed to work uh, pretty good. And this is showing the ECM with the uh, top cover gone and you can see the grommet in the bottom left corner of the in the plastic and then if you look at the top the top left you can see there's no grommet that's one of the ones that pulled out and then this is the uh, connector for the wiring harness and um, since I just like to say this about that really quick that um, since this is in a, a box a weatherproof box you can uh, back probe the um, the connector or if you have a small enough I have to get a set of micro probes that will fit in there. Real tiny, the 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 um, the contacts that go into the into the um, 
the connector, but I, I back probed it, which you can do because it's not it's not a weather pack. It's uh, you know it's in a weather sealed uh, box, and you just flip the lever, and that uh, releases the um, the contact the uh, connector from the contacts. And you have to slide the backing off through the uh, the lever. What I did is I just disconnected the lever. You can see where it goes down onto the the gray the gray connector. And it's circular. You just sort of pull up on that. You know, it's plastic, but it's you know the the spring um, tension just of the plastic holds it on there. And you just pull it up and slide it out, and then slide the contact. Uh, I mean the uh, the cover off the connector. And this is the um, this is uh, bank one sensor two uh, connector. It's a blue connector, and somewhere along the line, somebody broke broke the connector off the the bracket that it goes on to. And you can see, um, I think the one next to it that's to the left, the green one. That's um, I think that's uh, bank two sensor two. I'm not. I think I think it is. And what happened is that's broken off the the um, the little holder, the little bracket that holds it on. I don't know who did that, but that's the way it is. So as you can see in the um, the picture in picture, you can see the uh, round tip uh, probe. You never want to insert that into a um, a blade type uh, connector. And as you can see in this picture, this is a, a flat um, connector. It goes right. It slides right in there with the the right amount of force, and the end screws on to the end of my uh, my test probe. This is my uh, collection of uh, different uh, test probes. And again, the, uh, the test probes screw on the end of uh, my, um, my uh, DVM, my automotive DVM. And this is the correct test probe. It's a, a little blade type, uh, flat blade. So I got to the point where I had to remove the um, the oxygen sensor, and um, it was it's pretty it's in there pretty tight. I'll have to admit, and um, you know, it's been in there 17 years or so. You know, and all that road whatever splashing up on it and everything, and you know, I guess it gets down in there. So I found the best way to um, to remove something like that is um, I heat it up with a propane torch, and then I. Sp uh, spray it with uh, PB blaster or any kind of penetrating oil that it's you know it's it's magnitudes cooler than the the, the um, whatever you're heating up so right away it causes it to um, it shocks it you know and it, and it and some of the PB blaster or penetrating oil does get in and you just do that a couple times repeat it and um, I let it sit overnight and then I did two more in the morning and I well, you, you know, you get to the point where, you know, it's, it's a no, it's no more good, the oxygen sensors. So I have two tools I can use to get it off. And, and one, the one I really like, it's sort of like, a, it looks like a socket with a cut down, a slit down the side for the wires. You know, that's when you're going to put it on, you know, you, you want to have, you know, the wire stick out when you're putting a new one back on. But anyway, there isn't enough room for that one. And then the second one I have it's a little bit shorter, but it only it fits tight and will only fit a brand new oxygen sensor, and it won't fit if you got any kind of distort, distortion of the the, the uh, nut, the you know the bolt part, like it's rounded part, it won't fit on there. So, you know, I came to the conclusion I cut the wires and put put the um, 
put the um, I put the uh, box end wrench on there, and um, I mean that's that's the way to get it off, you know. And it it it's a long long wrench. It's a long handle wrench, so it gives me a little bit more torque too. And it, I mean, if you you know you if you're gonna cut the wires and you there's the slightest possibility that you for some reason it's something else, you know, another sensor or something. And you're going to use it again. And some of the wires, you're going, well, wait a minute. Some of the wires are the same color. We'll just cut them at different lengths. So you know which ones to solder back up. You know, if you cut one two inches long and the other one one inch long, you're not going to get them soldered back wrong. You just solder them back, slide a piece of uh, heat shrink up over them or use some kind of liquid tape or whatever, you know. But So I just cut the wires, got it, took care of it with the box end wrench. There's my uh, emission sticker. I don't know why I included that, but it's it's there and it's showing it that it's a it is yes it's a ULEV car, and um, I don't know how it got on the East Coast. It's I it was I, the only thing I could think it was bought either I tracked it down to the dealership it was bought at Sunderland, which they have a dealership in Florida and two in in uh, Georgia and. Um, the only thing I could think of is it was driven from, driven from California to Florida or, or Georgia, or they just were so in such demand they the dealership just took 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 UL, ULEV cars. I don't know. <laughs> And here's my uh, oxygen sensor just arrived from Rock Auto. And there's the uh, the new, a lot leaner looking. It's not as fat as the other uh, ox sensor was. And uh, it's nice and shiny. And here's the uh, freeze frame of uh, my, uh, the new... Uh, Bank one sensor two, and it's showing uh, 670 millivolts. And again, the uh, the short term fuel trim, it not not available is nothing to worry about. And it pretty much uh, follows uh, the uh, the bank one sensor one uh, voltage, you know, change in voltage. And this is showing that the uh, sewer says OTS. That's uh, saying that it's uh, the uh, this was the uh, missions readiness test. So um, I took it up uh, to the um, after driving it a couple hundred miles uh, to work and stuff. I took it up today to uh, get the. Uh, it just so happens the emissions needed to be done. And I took it up and it uh, it passed. Here's the uh, old oxygen sensor again.